Today, we'll be rebuilding a Premier League team that's had a bad season so far. They've got a manager whose philosophy seems to be outdated and it looks like he might be on his way out of the club. And if those problems weren't enough, the board have currently been protested against by the fan base who say that the board have wasted the potential of the club both on and off the pitch. So we're going to try and resolve all of those issues in five years as manager of Crystal Palace. That's right. Today, we're rebuilding the Eagles in the Premier League a London club that definitely doesn't have the silverware in the cabinet that other London sides do with not many trophies won in their history but they've been in the Premier League for over a decade now and in that time they've never really surpassed a mid-table finish. They've obviously had Roy Hodgson in recent years. They tried something new with Vieira and that didn't work so then they went back to Hodgson and the club seems to be in a bit of a stalemate with the potential chance of relegation in the future. So in five years here as Palace manager we're going to try and take them up the Premier League table making realistic transfers along the way to see what this club could potentially be and we've already got some great players at the club to help us out like England centre-back and captain Mark Gurhey. The Frenchman Michael Elise is a brilliant wing talent who's been wanted in real life by a lot of the elite Premier League teams. And the Bereze is a brilliant 25-year-old central midfielder, again, with England experience. There's also talented left-back Tyrik Mitchell, the Danish passing machine that is Joachim Andersen, and the Malian Czech Decore, recently linked with Liverpool in real life and wanted here by Chelsea. And financially, the club doesn't seem to be in the worst state possible. There's £13 million in the balance, £7 million worth of transfer budget left over for us to use, and about £132 million of debt that we're going to try and eradicate during our time as Palace manager. Our first job, though, will be to make some transfers to try and improve this squad ahead of our first season. Before we do that though, if you guys could do me a massive favour, I'd be super thankful if you could just scroll down and hit the like button on this video. It really will help me and help the channel in the YouTube algorithm. And comment down below what rebuild you want to see next. Every rebuild we do is based on your suggestions or let me know what you've had for dinner. It's always great to get involved with you guys down in the comments. Subscribe as well if you haven't already as we do weekly Football Manager rebuilds. So if you enjoy this, you'll likely enjoy enjoy the other content on the channel. On that note, I just want to say a big, big thank you for getting us to 30k subscribers. It's a huge achievement for me and I'm massively thankful. It's you guys who have made it possible. So yeah, a big, big thank you for that. One final thing though, if you want to continue this rebuild yourself, you can find my Patreon linked in the description down below. Over there, you can help support me as a creator and in return, you'll get those save files so you can give the rebuild a go and see how you would get on compared to what I did. With that being said, let's see who we bought in in season and one. Firstly, I got some players out the door. These might be controversial transfers, but I want to take our Palace team in a new direction. So Jordan Ayew has left the club. He's been at Palace for years. We've shipped him off to Germany to Eintracht Frankfurt for 2.6 million, which is going straight back in our transfer balance. I also didn't see too much of a place in our team for Jairo Reidewald, who used to be an FM wonder kid. Now he's 26, not the world's best player. So we've moved him on to Las Palmas out in Spain for 925. 5K. Jeffrey Schlupp has also moved. The Ghanaian has gone and signed for Torino. The former Leicester player has moved for a fee of 2.4 mil. Been at Palace for years, done a great job for him, but it's time for us to look for something different. But our biggest sale was Will Hughes, who I've shipped on to West Ham for 10 million pounds, which I think is a pretty good fee considering Palace paid 6 million for him from Watford. He's played a few games here and there over the last few seasons, but again, for me, isn't someone that I really want to build around in this team. And that gave us some cash to spend and the first player that I bought in was the Algerian midfielder the workhorse that is Hicham Bouadawi here he's joined us from the French divisions he was playing for Nice where he originally joined from the Algerian divisions played a few great seasons for them now we've paid 11 million but I do think we've got a very talented player on our hands who will definitely bolster our midfield I've also spent two million pounds on the Argentinian Lucas Rodriguez 26 year old coming in from the Mexican divisions I think two million is a decent fee for the attributes that he has. All of these players are scouts have recommended. I don't use my own football manager knowledge. Otherwise, I just end up signing all the best wonder kids and in a couple of years, we'd have a mega team. And obviously, that isn't super realistic. But Lucas Rodriguez is in and there was one other transfer. And that was Ferdi Kadioglu, a Turkish 23-year-old with international experience who can play left back and right back. And to be honest, I think this is a real coup for us here at Palace. He joins us from Fenerbahce for 17.25 million. No, 
additional fees or rises in there. So it's a flat fee for a very talented player who's good going forward and good defensively as well. I think we've got a real gem on our hands. He's valued at now around 25, 26 million. So it seems like we've made some good business there and that really helps improve our best 11. And here is our best 11 with Sam Johnston as our best goalkeeper, but he'll be competing with Dean Henderson in the net, I'm sure. We've got Ferdi Kadioglu coming in at right back. Anderson, Mitchell and Gerhi, you've already met. Jefferson Lerma is a very talented Colombian midfield option with Ebere Cheese and also Decore in the midfield. Mateta is our best striker, which is something that I think we need to fix going forward. I'm not sure we can rely on him, but maybe Edouard could help us get some goals. The French 25-year-old is always good in football manager and apparently he's our best option on the left flank with Elise being our best on the right. We've got some great players in the team, including the youngster Matthias Franca, 19-year-old Brazilian with lots of potential. So we'll be looking to try and get the best out of him at some point in this save. But overall, I think this is a decent Premier League team. We should be able to avoid relegation. And tactically, we're going for 4-3-3 because I do think that suits Crystal Palace's style where most of our best players are in these central midfield areas. And we've got a couple of good wide options, particularly Michael Elise, who I'm hoping will be the star of the show in this save. But our team is ready to go. Season one is about to get underway. So let's see how we get on in our first year. And you know what? We actually had a very good first season. We finished in ninth place, which if I'm not wrong, is their best finish in this current period in the Premier League, where their best before that was 10th place. So that is already a very impressive start. We got 61 points, only eight points away from a sixth place Europa League spot. If you're wondering why seventh place didn't get a conference league position, that's because Everton took it, who also got relegated with their 10 point deduction. A very strange season for them, I'm sure. But we got 18 wins 13 losses and seven draws which is very impressive for our Crystal Palace side the cup competitions we weren't too good in we didn't do anything too special but speaking of special our top goal scorer in the Premier League was Odson Edward the former Celtic player who you we were hoping could chip in with some goals certainly did with 20 goals in 37 Premier League appearances now making up for that fee that Palace paid for him of around 15 million a few years ago a very talented player and he was amongst a few that really stood out this season, including Jefferson Lerma, Michael Elise, and Czech Ducore. Matthias Franker also did well when called upon, and Ebrecht Chiesa did manage to contribute with 11 goals himself. The players that you'd expect to do well definitely did, and it's been a great first year for us here at Crystal Palace. Going into season two, we're going to have a bit more money to play with, 50 million pounds and 60 grand's worth in the wage budget, and if we have a look at the debts and loans, I think that's gone down a little bit since we started, but there's still a lot to work off. But as far as first seasons go, that was a good one. Now, though, we can get properly stuck into our rebuild, make some transfers, and I think completely change this squad around. Starting off with the sales, I did mention I wasn't fully happy with Mateta being one of our best strikers, and he actually was our best striker according to the best 11 at the start of that first season. So we've shipped him off to Middlesbrough for £10 million, who have recently been promoted. He scored five goals for us last year in three starts and 20 sub appearances. Not really someone that I want to rely upon long term, so we took the money for him and we've reinvested that. And the same happened as well for Jefferson Lerma. The 29 year old Colombian has joined Al. Quadzea out in Saudi Arabia for 24.5 mil. He decided he wanted to go when there was interest from Saudi, coming in from Bournemouth, having a great first year with a seven average match rate in five goals and four assists, and will definitely take that transfer profit of about 25 million to put back into our team. And our Lerma money went straight in to a new midfielder onto Kernan Dewsbury Hall of Leicester, who played for them in the championship last year, did very well, caught the eyes of our scouts, and was willing to move for us for a fee of about 25 million, which I think is definitely a good fee for a player who is this good, comes in as one of our best midfield options. He's English as well, 25, and he can grow with the club as we continue to get better. And then the Mateta money, we bought in a new attacking option to deputise for Michael Elise. This is Matthias Sewell, who is an Argentinian 21-year-old at this point, coming in from Juventus. Spent a year out on loan in Serie 
Serie A with Frosinon and did very well for them. So now he's caught the eyes of our scouts and we've bought him in with the idea of using him and selling him on for big money in the future, which is probably the way we're going to have to go with Palace because realistically, we're never going to be the biggest spenders in the league. We're going to have to buy low, sell high to keep funding this club and getting us up that table each season. But we did bring in two other transfers along the way. Jack Clark was our first one coming in from Sunderland. The former Tottenham man has had three good seasons for them, particularly last year with five goals, five assists and a near enough seven rating across the course of the season. We have paid 13.5 million, which doesn't seem to be the worst fee for a player that comes in as a good wide option, 23 years of age as well, so can continue to get better. And again, fits into that theme of trying to buy low and hopefully sell high in the future. Now, there's no guarantee that will work with every single player, but I definitely think it will work with Joshua Zerzi. He's a real gem of a signing for us here at Palace, wanted by some very big clubs in real life, and he was in this FM save as well. We just got there ahead of them, signing the former Bayern Munich player from Bologna for 22 and a half million, potentially rising to about 30 mil. He can score goals. He can pass a ball well as well. He's very good physically, six foot four, quick, strong. And I definitely think this is a great signing for us here at Palace. And with him signed, that was our transfers complete for our second season here. And if we now have a look at our best 11, it's definitely looking like it's coming along and looking better than what it did before. It's still Johnston in goal, but it's now Kadioglu at right back. Mitchell Gurhi and Anderson still as at defence. We've got Buadawi in the midfield near Ducore and Dewsbury Hall for a very strong midfield there. Eze is apparently now our best on the left with Elise on the right and Edward going forward. But we know we've got great players on the bench as well this year. Matthias Saul, Matthias Frank, as well. Rob Holding, the former Arsenal player, is here. There's also this guy that I didn't know too much about, Chris Richards. He's an American defender that Palace signed from Bayern Munich a few years ago, and he really does look like a good option here in Football Manager, and if we can grow him, I think we could have a very good few options in that centre-back spot. We finished ninth last year, and this year we're predicted to finish in 11th place with 150 to 1 odds of winning the title. We're way clear in the prediction when it comes to the relegation zone, which is exactly what we want to see and hopefully this year's signings can help guide us to a finish in a European spot. So let's see what we can do in season two. And we had a brilliant second season, doing well in the league and the FA Cup, and it actually led us to a cup final against Newcastle, where in the 18th minute, Marcus Turan went through for them and slotted it past Sam Johnston to put the Geordies 1-0 up. And at that point, we did start to worry if the game was going to be a loss, and that worry became worse. In the 31st minute, Isaac went down the right, played into Toram in the middle, and it was tapped in. That meant we were 2-0 down, and it looked like the game was up, but we were willing to to give some fight back. Dewsbury Hall played Edward through in the 41st minute who went one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and tucked it past the Bravka to make it 2-1 to give us a little bit of hope in the cup final. In the 51st minute he got a penalty and Edward scored his second to make it 2-2 and then in the 70th minute Edward pounced on a defensive error to smash it in, get his hat-trick and somehow in only our second season we won the FA Cup the first time in Crystal Palace's history. And if that wasn't enough we've also got a Europa League finish, getting 63 points, two more than last season, if I remember correct. Only the big six above us, other than Chelsea, who have finished in 10th place. 19 wins, six draws, and 13 losses in a very impressive year means that next year we'll play European football and we're going to need some new players to help us along the way. But we have some stars of the team to thank, like Dewsbury Hall, who came in and made that midfield spot his own, scoring 14 goals in all competitions, nine in the league, with 10 assists as well. The English midfielder was brilliant for us, as was Edward, who chipped in with 24 goals. Zerzi, in his first season, found his feet in England with 13 goals in all comps and 11 in the league, which is definitely a good start for him, but we want to see him improve over time. Elise managed to bag 10 goals as well across the course of the season, continuing to get better. Disappointingly, Jack Clark didn't have the best year after signing, and Matthias Huell, the new signing, when he did play, he did impress, which bodes well for the future. We've got European football, We've won the FA Cup and to be honest, we could probably stop the rebuild here because I don't think it's going to get much better than that for us here at Palace, but we have got £54 million to spend, 30 grand's worth of wage budget. Financially, it's not looking as good as it once was, but we're about to get our Premier League money come in. We'll sell some players on, move some players around and hopefully we can fix that in the season three transfer window. 
And in this window, we actually made more from sales than we spent on our team, but we have massively upgraded our squad. Firstly, Sam Johnson has gone to Leicester for a huge fee of 25 million. He has been our starting goalkeeper by the looks of it for the last two years, but that's a huge fee for Leicester to pay, particularly for a goalie that maybe isn't the world's best. So we snatched that cash off of Leicester for a 32 year old and we've happily reinvested that. Lucas Rodriguez, it didn't really work out for him here after we signed him. Now a 28 year old, he has moved to Real Vallecano out in Spain, but we do make a profit on him from what we originally paid for him. So it isn't the worst transfer in the world. It just didn't quite work out. Rob Holt Holding has moved on to join Real Valladolid. He just never really took off here in a Palace shirt. Barely played one start in one season and one start in the other. He's moved on for pretty much the fee that Palace paid for him. We're going to forget he ever really existed, to be honest. But one player that we are going to miss is Tyrick Mitchell, who said that he wanted to leave the club to look for a new challenge. The man was only 25. He just got the club that he'd been at for years into European football. But you know what? We said, fine, whatever. If a good bid comes in, we'll let you go. And out. Ali certainly made a good bid. £50 million for the English left back. Yes, he's a good player. Is he £50 million good though? I'm not so sure. For that reason, we took the money. We've got £50 million to spend and we put that all back into the transfers that we made. Firstly, Rob Holding's replacement is a very shrewd signing in my eyes. It's Toby Alderweireld. The former Tottenham player is a 36-year-old here. He's been playing for Antwerp out in Belgium and doing very well. He's going to be a bit part player for us, but he's a very good ball player, even though his physical attributes might have left him a little bit but he's still a top draw option and we're happy to have him on board for no fee at all. I've replaced Tyrick Mitchell with two players. Firstly, Nuno Tavares comes in, the 25-year-old Portuguese national signing from Chinese side Shanghai Port, where he moved to from Nottingham Forest, I believe. 6.5 million was the fee for him. Not a bad deal at all for this level of player, valued at about 12 million. Now, I did see a few tweets recently saying that there's a video of him out there on social media where he's making out with his dog. How true that is, I'm not sure. Hopefully, it's not. If it is, I mean... He's not doing it in this football manager world. This is a virtual version of him. So I feel like we're okay to sign him. But the better fallback, in my opinion, that we signed was Elias Jeller, who is a Danish international, 22-year-old, coming in from AC Milan. He signed from Copenhagen. Didn't really do too much for the Italian side. So we paid 12.5 million to sign him. Him and Tavares' transfer fee weren't even half of what we got from Tyrick Mitchell. So I think that's good business to improve our fallback spots. We spent the Dean Henderson money on former under-21 Italian goalkeeper Marco Carneschi here. He joins us from Atalanta where he's been brilliant for a few years. £13 million is the fee for a very good goalie option. But our biggest signing of the window was signing Samuel Illing Jr. from Juventus. The 21-year-old Englishman, formerly of Chelsea, went to Juve. Didn't play too much, but he is a very promising talent. And we've paid 18.75 million, just under 20 mil, for a very good wing option who comes in as one of our best with a potential to get way better. Now valued at about 70 million. Clearly, he's a very good player and we're delighted to have him in our team. And if we now have a look at our best 11, it's really starting to come together. I do think we have a Europa League level team now. We've got Karneshi in goal, Jellert, Anderson, Gerhi and Kadioglu at the back with Bawadawi at the base of the midfield. Decore is alongside Dewsbury Hall with Elise, Eze and Edward. For me, if it was how I imagine this best team to be, it would look something a little bit more like this. And then in the Mazzala role, we might have Eze. On the left-hand side, we might have Samuel Illing Jr. And then up front, maybe Joshua Zertzi. Either way, though, that shows you all of the options that we do have in the squad. We've got a much better chance this year, I think. Preview-wise, we've gone all the way up to 10th position. Yay! We're 50 to 1 odds now of winning the title. Far better than the 150 to 1 odds that we had last season. So certainly an improvement. The team is getting better and better every year. We're upgrading the facilities, trying to upgrade the stadium capacity as well where we can. And financially, whilst things might look a little bit worse right now, I think it's going to balance out now that we're getting European football. So let's see how we can get on in our third season here at the club. Okay, so our season got off to a flyer by winning the Community Shield for the first time in Crystal Palace's history. And in the Europa League, we did make it out of the league phase. We then faced off against Athletic Bilbao, Celtic and Fiorentina and somehow made it all the way into the final where we faced off against Nice. 
And after a very, very close game in the 90th minute, the ball found Edward, who again was the man for the big occasion. And that meant that we had won the Europa League. I don't know if Palace have been in European competition before, but this is the first time they've won a European trophy. So in three years, we've got the FA Cup, the Community Shield, a Europa League finish, and now winning the European competition itself. This might be our most successful rebuild yet. Now saying that, the FA Cup, Carabao Cup and the Premier League did go to the wayside a little bit, particularly the Premier League, where all of a sudden we finished with 47 points in 14th place. Because we won the Europa League though, we have qualified for the Champions League. We lost 17 games, drew 8 and had a minus 19 goal difference. That's a huge goal difference comparison to where we were last season. I have no idea what went wrong compared to other years. Maybe Tirk Mitchell was a much better player than I gave him credit for, but we managed to do well in Europe. Maybe Maybe the two competitions at the same time didn't help us so we are going to need some extra players to come in in our next window to really help us out considering we're going into the Champions League but there were some top performers this year that we need to highlight firstly Michael Elise had his best season that he's had yet by a long distance with 13 Premier League goals and seven assists in less appearances as well becoming the player that we knew he could we also had Czech the Corre doing very well in midfield Joachim Anderson got four goals and Xerxes improved from last season scoring 16 goals in all competitions now 25 years of age and a very handy striking option Edward also scored 15 Dewsbury Hall got 11 what went wrong I don't really know but we're going to try and correct it in our next transfer window where we've got 27 million pounds to spend and nothing in the wage budget and that is because the club financially isn't doing the best despite the Europa League win but I do think we're going to need to be a little bit more shrewd in the transfer market in this window. So let's see who we can bring in and more importantly, maybe who we can sell in the season four transfer window. Just to let you know what's coming, we have made over 150 million in sales and spent over 100 million on incomings. Before we see them though, just to let you guys know, I do have a Discord linked in the description down below to do with Football Manager. Over 700 members, a great community where you can go over, share your save, ask for advice, or just talk anything about FM, real life football, or general just live chat. It's a great place to be, some great people in there, and I think you really would enjoy it if that's your kind of thing. And don't forget as well to like the video if you are enjoying. Let's see who we sold first though because there were some very, very big sales. Let's start off low with Matthias Sewell who we did have for a few seasons but the Argentinian wanted to go having not played too much last year. He's gone to Almeria for about £5 million. Basically, we lost half of the money that we originally paid for him and in return, we got a goal and three assists in the league. Is that the best return? No. Is it the worst that it could possibly have gone? Also no. So you know what? We'll take it and we'll move on. A great bit of business though. Nuno Tavares is gone out the door. The reason I sold him is because he stopped turning up to training and reported twice not to train him, which I obviously wasn't happy with. So I've sold him straight away, offered him out and in came Saudi Arabian side Al Ittihad for 30 million. After one season, I think that's a pretty good turnaround in transfer fee. So goodbye to him. The American Chris Richards has signed for Al Halal out in Saudi Arabia too. They sent us 30 million pounds for the American who had one year left on his deal. A very good centre back, but we can't reject that much money for a player that didn't want to extend his contract anyway. This is where it gets a bit controversial though. After his great season last time out, I tried to extend Michael Elise's contract. He said he didn't want to extend because he wanted to play for a club with a better squad. He also only had one year left on his contract and we had to make the decision, either lose him for free and try and convince him or sell him for a fee and we decided to go for the sale because of the financial situation the club is in. The 24 year old has gone to Saudi of all places for £37.5 million. Yes, it's not the world's biggest fee for a player this good but again contract was expiring we didn't have much of a choice and he is joined by his fellow squad member Eberetche Eze so we've lost two of our key players two of Crystal Palace's best in real life he's gone for 50 million pounds though which actually isn't too bad considering he is 28 and last season don't want to be horrible but he was pretty terrible a 6.5 average match rating in 28 games 24 of them being starts as well really not the best from Eze so you know what maybe that won't be the worst sale in the world any Palace fans watching might be upset with those transfers, but when you see who he bought in, hopefully you'll forgive me. Firstly, Chris Richards' replacement is arguably a better player. Mario Vuskovic comes in, 24 years of age, a Croatian international signing from Hamburg out in the Bundesliga where he has been brilliant. Only £7 million for a 
great centre-back option who can pass as well as defend very well. I think he's an upgrade on Richards for far less and he's younger too. Our midfield has had some extra depth added to it with the signing of Juan Gonzalez, a Spanish former under-21 international, 24 years of age, who's been tearing it up for Lech out in Serie A in the Italian divisions. Three seasons in a row, consistent over seven average match ratings, which bodes well for the future. 11 mil isn't a lot for a player this good. Toby Alderweireld's replacement is Maxim Esteve. We now have him, Vuskovic, Anderson and Gerhi as a brilliant four options at centre-back. He comes in for a fee of only 15 million from Bournemouth as they had a relegation release clause and after they got relegated, we activated it. The Frenchman is a fantastic player. Again, a very good ball player too. Left-footed, gives us some balance and I think makes perfect sense in our defence. I wanted some extra quality at fullback too with Tavares leaving, so we have bought in the 32-year-old now, João Cancelo, a fantastic player and a real coup for Crystal Palace. He's played for Barcelona on loan. He then went back to Man City and played there too. We've now paid £10 million for the Portuguese international, a fantastic option who can play in both fullback areas and definitely uplevels our team. Noni Madueke is our Michael Elise replacement, 24 years of age, £30 million valuation. We got him for £18 million on the transfer list from Chelsea. The former PSV player obviously hasn't found his feet in Chelsea in this save, but I'm hoping he can find them here at Crystal Palace. Eze's replacement is Conor Gallagher, who was absolutely fantastic for Palace when he was on loan a few years ago. Decided to give Chelsea a go and not go back to Palace when they made the offer, but after a few years here in this save, he's got less and less game time. Chelsea won the league last season and are now willing to sell him. Transfer listed for 20 million. We bring him in. I think that's a great fee. Yes, you might not think he's the world's best player, but I think Palace fans will be happy to have him back and he really does complement the team blend that we do have. But our big money signing and maybe the one that is really the replacement of the star quality that we lost with Eze and Elise is Bradley Barcola from PSG. He's 23 years of age, he's been playing for PSG here and there and when he has played he's done fantastically well. We've paid 42.5 million, potentially rising to 45, a record fee for us here since we have became manager at the club and you know what, I think he could be a very good option for us. It's a bit of a risk because of the kind of player he is he might be a bit hit and miss but I do think he is a very good option and if we now have a look at our best 11 it is looking very very good. Karneshi is in goal, Jella, Anderson, Gerhi and Cody Glue at the back with Ducore, Dewsbury Hall and Badawi in the midfield with Madueke, Edward and Zertzi as our forward line and we have some great players on the bench too. Franca, Illing, Esteve, Barcola, Gallagher, Cancelo, Dean Henderson, Vuskovic, Jao Gonzalez. This team has really came together and I do think we've got a bright future going into our fourth Premier League season. If we do have a look, we're now predicted ninth place, 50 to 1 odds, but hopefully we can finish better than that 14th place that we were last year. But we will have the Champions League to compete with as well. So it's a big year in our penultimate season. Let's see how we can do in season four. And you know what? I'm very impressed with how our team did this year. Runners up in the UEFA Super Cup. We did lose to PSG 2-1, but we gave them a good effort. The Champions League is where I'm most impressed though. We made it to the round of 16. In the league phase, we finished in 13th place. Four wins against some great teams, two draws against some very good teams, and two losses as well. That put us into the knockout playoff round where we took on Benfica and knocked them out 5-3 on aggregate. Going to the round of 16 where AC Milan only edged us out by one goal, which would have set up a semi-final against none other than Real Sociedad, which could have, again, been pretty winnable. We likely would have lost in the semis against Real Madrid, but as far as seasons go in the Champions League, a first debut getting to the round of 16 is not bad at all. And in the Premier League, we have made it into a Conference League spot, a European position in eighth place, a little bit more accustomed to where I think this team should be right now with the squad we've got. 57 points, six goal difference, not as good as our first two years, but a much bigger improvement. I think since we've taken up European football. It's been a lot harder for us here to get as many wins in the league. One thing to note though, we did win the Euro SAM Club Challenge, which is the Europa League winner, I think against the Sudamericana winner. So that's a competition that the club has never won. And if you do have a look at our trophy cabinet now, compared to what we originally inherited, it's looking a lot better and our facilities looking great too. One thing that you might have noticed looking at the competitions tab though, is we didn't really have any major goal scorers. Xerxes was our highest goal scorer in the league with only eight goals. And that's something 
something that I want to rectify next season. I want to find a player who is going to be our 20, 30 goal a season man because for some reason, Edward seems to have stepped off the ball a little bit. We did manage to get 12 goals out of Barcola, 5 out of Ducore, 9 out of Madaweke, Illing got 6, Dewsbury Hall got 7. So the goals are spread around, but we really do need that man that's going to score 20, 30 goals to get us over the line. What is good to see though is those new players like Madaweke and like Barcola and Gallagher stepping in and doing fairly well for themselves pretty early on. That does bode well for our final season, which we have got coming up. Financially, we've got 30 million pounds in the transfer budget to spend. We've got 60 million pounds in the overall balance and the debts and loans have gone to zero. Not necessarily because we've been so great financially, more because we have a new chairperson in. Steve Parrish left and we had a new consortium takeover, but we've definitely improved Crystal Palace as a club over these last few years. So let's see what we can do in our fifth and final transfer window. And once again, we've sold over £100 million of players and spent less in the transfer window. So we are working in a pretty frugal way. Firstly, Dean Henderson has left, wanted to leave because he was never playing. Fair enough, he's gone to Fulham for £2.9 million and we've got a new goalkeeper on board this season. And we had to have that because we also lost Carneshi to Newcastle. He wanted to leave when they came in. He wanted to play for a better squad, blah, blah, blah. We've let him go for £47 million. He was good for us, but that can rise to £61 million, which is is an incredible fee for a goalkeeper that, to be honest, I don't think is the world's best. Jack Clark has also left the club. This one never really worked out, if I'm honest. After he came in from Sunderland, he scored a few goals, got a few assists, but never really took off too well. We made £1.8 million back from him. So it is about a £10 million fee that we've wasted, but I suppose we did get some years out of him contributing to our team. And our other major sale was Joshua Zertzi, who was starting to come into his own as a Palace player, but never really took off in the way that I thought he should do. Only eight goals last year and 18 starts. Wasn't the best. So in Saudi Arabian side, Al Ali came in for 50 million. We decided to take the fee. Now, if we do go to Al Ali and look at David Moyes' starting 11 there, yes, David Moyes' team of all people, he's got Emiliano Martinez, Morato, Jack Grealish, Eze, Mitchell, Elise, Zerzi, Laporte, and Fabian. He has got one, two, three, four Crystal Palace players here, if I'm getting that right, that we've had in our time. All of which are on huge wages as well. So you just have to say fair play. They've got the pulling power. We take the money and we reinvest in our team. And I'm very happy with the business we did. Firstly, we have Croatia's international goalie, Nikola Kavlina, coming in at the age of 25 from Dinamo Zagreb, where he's been exceptional for a fee of 13.25 million. Considering what he made from Henderson and Konecci, I'll definitely take that. Richarlison is in on a free to give us some depth both up front and in that left forward position. I'm not a big fan of him in real life to be honest but to get him for free here after some great seasons at Tottenham I'm going to take it. 30 years of age some experience to our front line. If he scores a few goals he'll be worth it. But the next two signings were real quality. Firstly Arda Gula has joined our Crystal Palace team. 22 years of age Turkish international. A brilliant midfield option coming in from Real Madrid for £29 million where he never really got given any kind of opportunity. He is an exceptional player the next Meza Ozil is now a Crystal Palace player. And Xerxi has been replaced by Kareem the Dream Canate, a striker that I love. The Ivorian comes in having been brilliant at RB Salzburg. We've paid £20 million for him, rising potentially to 25. A quick forward with great finishing ability. He is going to be a top level striker. And with that transfer done, that was our transfer business complete. And our final best 11 of this Crystal Palace rebuild is looking like a deadly team. It's Kavlina in goal, Gellert and Anderson, Gerhi and Kadioglu at the back, Ducore and Conor Gallagher in the midfield with Dewsbury Hall, Madaweke, Barcola and Edward with some fantastic players on the bench that are really going to elevate us, I think, across all competitions. And if we do have a look now at the Premier League preview, we're predicted eighth place. We've continued to make the team better. So we head into our final season with a conference league to play for and a Premier League where we're hoping we can maybe get another Europa League finish to top this off. And it was another season of the cup competitions. After a great showing in the EFL Cup, we made it to the final against Fulham, where Esteve put us up 1-0 after only seven minutes, and then Vuskovic scored a penalty in the 90th, putting it past Leno, and that meant we'd won the FA Cup, the Europa League, the Community Shield, and the Carabao Cup in our time here as Palace manager. And if that wasn't enough, a fantastic Conference League campaign led us to a final against FC Michelin where we went in as favourites and straight away, three minutes in, Conor Gallagher found the back of the net 
to put Crystal Palace 1 0 up in another European final. Then Ardagula in the 11th minute put a penalty past the goalie to make it 2 0. A corner followed in the 17th minute where Barcola rose highest and made it 3. Michelin did try and fight back in the 44th minute with Adingra playing this ball in, which got put past Cavlina in goal after a little deflection from our defence. But then in the 70th minute, we made sure we got the job done, Illing Jr. receiving the ball on the edge of the box and curling it to Ardagula, who added his second of the game. And that meant we'd also won the Conference League, which is crazy to say, two European competitions, both of the English Cups and the Community Shield. And that doesn't even count the trophy that we won against the South American teams. We are doing so well. But that didn't mean we did poorly in the other Cups either. The FA Cup, we got to the semi-final and the Premier League, we were one point away from winning the title. Man City got 78 points, we got 77, which is nowhere near what you should need to win the Prem, it should be far higher, but this season just seems to be a poor season all around for everyone. There was about five teams, six teams that could potentially have won it. We were one point away, we had the same goal difference as Man City. An extra loss in them was what made the difference, which is quite unfortunate, but we were so good in the last few months of the season. This month in December was exceptional, where we won every single game, barely conceding either. We played amazing, and and we had some great players to thank for it. Barcola scoring 34, the young Frenchman having the season of his life. Canate chipped in with 17 goals. Gula got 12, Gallagher got 9. Dewsbury Hall came back to form with 16 goals this season. Great performances across the pitch. And Edward, the unsung hero, managed to bag 20 goals yet again in all competitions. A brilliant player for us across the course of this rebuild. Great performances all around. The club has improved the facilities as well. And financially, things are also looking pretty strong. We have managed to rebuild Crystal Palace. Obviously, in real life, like I said, the fans had a banner that said there was wasted potential on and off the pitch. And you know what? I think we've lived up to that potential here. Look at the trophy cabinet compared to what we started. That is a fantastic rebuild, and I'm delighted with that. Hopefully, you have enjoyed. Smash the like button if you have. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.